this is Ann Kennedy coming to you from SES New York on the conference floor. And I am standing here with Mark Drummond, who's the CEO of WOWD, which is a real, real, real-time search engine. And we just finished a session talking about real-time search and discovery. And so I have a couple questions for you, Mark, because I thought you had some really interesting phraseology that we don't hear very much here at SES that show that you have a new way of looking at all of this. So let's start with the spherical elephant. <laughs> A spherical elephant is just a metaphor from my, uh, my engineering past. When people in engineering or computer science want to talk about the ideal case or some perfect abstraction, they say, imagine a spherical elephant, meaning what if this elephant was shaped like a sphere and had no arms, no legs, no nose, no tail, no nothing? What could you do with it or how would you then proceed in some argument? And everyone knows that elephants are not spherical, so it's a pretty bad assumption to start with. So I think I mentioned it on the panel in the context of if you assume a spherical elephant, other things don't work out so well. And in the context of the panel, where did you take it from there? That's a really good question. It's honestly a blur. Oh. <laughs> well, where, what I heard you say was I heard you talk a little bit about the uh, trade-off between uh, uh, space-based um, right. search and results and then adding the element of time. Do you want to expand uh, on that a little bit? That's great. I'm glad you were listening. Uh, so yeah, in, in computer science, there's this age-old trade-off between space and time. Uh, as someone once said to us uh, recently, any monkey can make it fast if they make it small. And by that, this person was meaning, if all you're going to do is index two, three, four, maybe even half a dozen websites, it's actually very easy to make it fast. Whereas if, like WOW does, you want to index the entire web, including the deep web, making that fast, that's actually really hard. How long have you, has WOW been around? We were founded in 2007 by Boris Agapiev, who is... Uh, originally, he grew up in Serbia, and now he's based in Portland, Oregon. And what is your plan for WOWD? Well, our plan is to grow it. We're uh, venture backs. Uh, Steve Jurvetson of Draper Fisher Jurvetson is on our board. Dave Hills of KPG Ventures is on our board. Uh, we're based in Palo Alto, but our development team is in Serbia. So our plan is to take this out and make people understand that it's the next best way to find things on the web in real time. It seemed to me that some of the discussion that we got to in that session was that it was also might be the next best way to approach marketing online. And that brought me to the next phrase that I remember you, you talked about was Twitter search optimization. Now, right. I've been optimizing for search for 13 years. Never occurred to me that you could do Twitter search optimization. How would we do that? Well, because uh, Twitter search just looks in a narrow time window and they throw old results away, what that means is that people who have content that want content to be found are encouraged to keep basically pounding tweets, which contain URLs, into the Twitter stream. Let's say that on Monday you post something of great relevance. By Friday, it's long distant memory. In fact, it can't be found with a search inside Twitter. So if you want your stuff to be found, what that sliding window search, as we call it inside Twitter, encourages people to do is be relentless and keep posting new updates into Twitter. So they basically set up scripts or robots, if you will, that take a little pattern, find the latest on something, they instantiate that something, and then the robot posts that into Twitter. So whereas in traditional SEO, you're playing the game in space, you're saying, I want to get linked to as much as possible, I want my pages to be authoritative looking as possible, I want the information retrieval metrics to be as good as possible. In TSO, it's really just a velocity game. You're just putting stuff in. Everyone is working hard to, uh, say, defeat that. But for now, the companies that are really succeeding are, are doing that kind of TSO. Yeah, it sounds to me it's a little bit like edging over into what we used to have a blog spam where you'd have bots writing, you know, firing 50,000 blog posts. Mm -hmm. Is this because whenever we get a new technology, somebody figures out a way to overdo it at first, maybe? Sure. I, I think it's a game, right? And the moment that one side ups the ante, the other side has to up their ante. Just to be clear, though, I don't think that all the people that are doing TSO are actually spammers. I think that there's a lot of high-quality information that's being put into the Twitter stream in exactly that way. So I think of Twitter as the, the planet's alert system. And there are companies that quite legitimately say have uh, uh, inventory that they want to clear or specials that they want to announce. They can hook that up to their databases and pump that information into Twitter. And it's useful. I think the key thing is, is what people are searching for and finding in your tweets, what the tweets are actually about. 
So I don't think that TSO is the same as spam, although there's certainly people using it to do spamming in Twitter. So like many other things, it's become a, a new marketing opportunity if we have a product or if there is some event like a natural disaster and the Red Cross wants to get the word out and get people searching for it. That's all very interesting. Well, I'm really glad you could stop and talk to us. It was a most interesting program and good luck with WOWD.